All right, so what's a matrix equation look like? It looks like this question number one. We got a matrix A times some matrix that we don't know. Let's call that X. Um, so A times some matrix that we don't know is equal to this other matrix that we do know. Uh, A times X equals B. How might I solve for X? Divide A. If, if it were possible to divide matrices... We could just divide by A. But it's actually not possible to divide matrices. But we can still kind of do this idea of like the opposite or the inverse operation of multiplying by a matrix. And that's what we learned yesterday with this matrix multiplication. So if we can't divide by a matrix, but we can multiply by the matrix inverse. And we did that yesterday. So that A inverse times A... Yesterday, we talked about what that equaled. Anybody remember what A inverse times A is equal to? The I. Yeah, that's the identity matrix times X. And anybody remember what the identity matrix times some other matrix is always going to be equal to? That matrix, we used A yesterday, uh, but I times X today is just going to be X. So if we multiply by A inverse on the left, what's left on the left? Just this matrix that we're trying to find, this unknown matrix that we're trying to solve for. But in math, can we just multiply one side of the equation by A inverse? Not quite. Uh, we also need to multiply uh, the left side uh, by A inverse also. Uh, so we get X, our equation, is equal to A inverse B. All of that is in your notes. If you look, it's right down here on the left-hand side, A inverse times A. A inverse times B, we multiply both sides by A inverse. Um, IX, the identity, uh, A inverse times B, I times X is just X. Um, so, uh, but you need to make sure that the inverse is multiplied on the left side, not the right side. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. So if we're going to do something like number one, uh, what do we need to do? Well, first we need to find the inverse, and that's what we learned yesterday very quickly. Uh, so let's review how to find the inverse. 1 over, we're going to multiply the main diagonal, 2 times 2. So we're going to multiply the 2 and the 2 together. Uh, that's going to be 4. We're going to subtract. We're going to multiply the backwards diagonal together. 1 times 3 is 3. So we get 1 over 4 minus 3. 4 minus 3, we called 4 minus 3 yesterday uh, the determinants. So just this denominator part uh, would be the determinant. That's what we learned yesterday, just the 4 minus 3, which equals 1. Um, and then we have to do something to our matrix to make it the inverse matrix. Uh, we're going to take the main diagonal, and we're going to switch uh, the two uh, elements on the main diagonal. They're actually going to switch places. Um, it's hard to switch the same number, but they switched places. And then the two numbers on the backwards diagonal, uh, the 1 and the 3 in this case, they are going to change signs. So it's going to become negative 1 and negative 3. They do not switch places. They just switch signs. 4 minus 3 is just 1, so we get 1 over 1. Uh, this is just 2, negative 1, and negative 3, 2. Our notes just really do a really good job of like writing out every single step, but once we get down to the next example, we're not going to write every single step down. Uh, it'll go a little bit quicker, maybe. And then if uh, this uh, this this note here. If we multiply by the scalar on the outside, if it causes fractions, don't multiply it yet. Wait, save it. Multiply it at the end. Uh, don't multiply it yet. We'll see an example like that in a second, uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. But since this is just one, one times two is just two. Uh, we actually do not get any fractions, so it's okay to go ahead and multiply that. If we were to get like just one fraction. We would not want to multiply that at all. We would not want to multiply that at all uh, until the very last step. We would multiply by the uh, scalar on the outside. So now what are we going to do? We're going to write down a lot more than we probably need to write down every single time we work this out, uh, just so we can see what really happens. We're going to multiply the A inverse and the A together. A inverse, we just found. That's 2, negative 1, negative 3, and 2. And why are we doing this? Because we want the A, the A, the 2, 1, 3, 2, uh, we want it to go away. 
And if we were to multiply all of that together and take time to multiply this out, two times two is four. So we get four plus negative one and three is negative three. Two times one is two. Negative one and two is negative two. Negative three times two is negative six. Uh, two times three is positive six. Negative three times one is negative three. We're just multiplying matrices together here. And two times two is four. And what does that equal? Four plus negative three is one. Two plus negative two is zero. Negative six plus six is zero. And negative three plus four is one. So what do we see? What did we get there? We actually did get the identity matrix. And if we multiply the identity matrix times X, guess what happens? We just get X. So the left side is done. So from now on, do we, you need to multiply the left side ever again? No, don't. It's kind of a waste of time because I know A inverse times A is always going to give me this, which is always just going to equal X. All right, but we do need to multiply the right side. We have to multiply the right side, and that's where the majority of this work comes in. We have A inverse times B. And we need to make sure that A inverse is on the left matrix, not the right matrix. You just will not get the right answer um, if you do B times A inverse. All right, so there's A inverse. B was the 5, 1, 2, 1 uh, back at the beginning um, of our problem, 5, 1, one. <clears throat> now, hopefully you remember how to multiply matrices. I'm not going to spend a super long amount of time multiplying these together, uh, but if you don't remember how to multiply matrices, let me know so I can help you. Uh, 2 times 5 is 10. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. We're going to do the same thing with the second column. 2 times 1 is 2, and negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. So we're done with the first row. We did all of the stuff we needed to do with the first row. And now we're going to do the second row, the negative 3 and the 2. We're going to multiply the negative 3 times the 5 and the 2 times the 2. That's negative 15 plus 4. And then we're going to multiply the negative 3 times the 1 and the 2 times the 1. That's negative 3 plus 2. And then we're going to add those numbers together. And then we're going to be done. Uh, pretty much with this problem. 10 plus negative 2 is 8. 2 plus negative 1 is 1. Negative 15 plus 4 is negative 11. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. And we said the identity times x is just x. So the right side is still going to be 8, 1, negative 11, and negative 1. If we were to take our original matrix A up top, and multiply it by the X matrix that we just found, what should we get if we did it correctly? We should get the B matrix, the 5, 1, 2, 1, um, if we were to multiply those together. And we have solved for this unknown matrix, which is kind of cool. All right, let's try another. Right, that was a lot of work. Right, We're going to skip all this stuff on the left side. We're not going to skip it. We're going to talk about it, but we're not going to actually multiply all this together uh, on the left side. The only thing we're going to do is this A inverse times B part on the right side. Uh, so what do we have? We have this is A, this is X, and this is B. So if we were to solve for X, uh, what would we get? We would get X equals A inverse times B. We multiply by A inverse on the left. The A inverse and the A would equal the identity matrix. We would just get X on the left. And then we have to multiply A inverse times B on the right side. Uh, so what is A inverse? A inverse is 1 over something, 1 over something times our rearranged uh, matrix. The 6 and the 3 are going to switch places. The 8 and the 2 are going to change signs. And what number goes here? The determinant goes here. That's going to be 6 times 3. I'm just going to find this off to the side uh, so I can go ahead and simplify it. 6 times 3 is 18, minus 8 times 2 is 16, 18 minus 16 is 2. Uh, so we get 1 half. And then we've already switched our A matrix around uh, for the inverse. And then we're going to multiply that by the B matrix, 4, 3, 0, negative 2. 
Now, could you multiply by the one half now? Yes, you could. Um, but if you end up with a fraction or two or three or four fractions inside that matrix, it's going to be really cumbersome, really tedious uh, to do the matrix multiplication with a whole bunch of fractions. It's going to take you a lot longer than it's going to take you anyway. So let's leave the one half on the outside and just multiply the two matrices together first. Let's do this first. Uh, and then we can multiply by the one half at the end. Okay. Um, and I promise it'll equal the same thing. Uh, if we were to multiply by the one half now, uh, it's going to be a lot easier if we multiply by the one half later. All right, so let's talk about matrix multiplication again. Um, so we get the three, uh, the first row, the three and the negative eight. We're going to multiply the three times the four and the negative eight times the zero. That's 12 plus zero. 12 plus zero. Go ahead and add those together if you want. And then we're going to do the first row in the second column. 3 times 3 is 9, and negative 8 times negative 2 is positive 16. So we get 9 plus 16. So we're done with row 1. Now we can do uh, row 2. We got negative 2 and 6, negative 2 and 6. We're going to multiply the negative 2 and the 4 together, the 6 and the 0 together. That's negative 8 plus 0. We're going to multiply the negative 2 times the 3. That's negative 6. And the 6 times the negative 2 uh, is negative 12. Negative 6 plus negative 12. So a good test question may not be to actually multiply everything together. Because we do know it takes a while to do this without uh, matrix technology such as Desmos. Uh, so maybe the answer choices on your test Friday, maybe it would just be that part right there. You wouldn't actually have to multiply them together, perhaps. Uh, so there is that. And then we're going to add those together. So we get one half. 12 plus 0 is 12. 9 plus 16 is 25. Negative 8 plus 0. And negative 6 plus negative 12 is negative 18. And now we can do the one half. Yes. Yes. And now we can multiply everything times one half. Uh, the 12 times one half uh, is six. The 25 times one half is just 25 over two. I would just leave it 25 over two. Uh, I would not try to change it to a decimal. Uh, it'll be okay if you do. Um, but we don't want to round decimals like 45 over 3. Uh, you would actually have to round that, perhaps. Uh, so we get 25 over 2. 1 half times negative 8 is negative 4. And 1 half times negative 18 uh, is negative 9. So that was our matrix that we didn't know at the beginning of class. We had done some of these in the past before spring break. Uh, but we were only like adding or subtracting. They were much easier to find uh, than multiplying. Uh, so we had to wait to find the multiplying. All right. All right. On uh, your next page of notes, uh, it looks a lot different. And I, and I agree. It does look way different. Uh, and maybe you remember doing uh, equations like this from Algebra 1. Uh, we would call this a system of equations. Uh, in our case, we have two equations. And two unknown variables, we would call that a two-by-two two system of equations. Uh, and in Algebra 1, you probably used the graphing method where you graph two lines and you pick the point where they cross. Or you did the elimination method where you like added or subtracted the equations together until like one of the variables just eliminated. Or you did the substitution method where maybe you solved for y here in the second equation and then you plug that back into the first equation so you could solve for x. Can we do all of those ways still? Yes. Are they going to be more efficient than what we're going to do today? Maybe, because we're not using matrix technology. But when we get into like 3x3, three 4x4, three, 5x5 four four, five five systems of equations, where you have like four equations and four unknown variables, the graphing method, the elimination method, the substitution method, they're good, but it's going to take you a really, really long time to do that. 
If we learn how to solve those by setting them up as a matrix equation, just like we just got done doing, then we can solve those relatively quickly, like 30 seconds or less uh, using matrix technology like Desmos. Uh, so that's what we're going to learn. We're going to start with two by two by hand. And then tomorrow, we're going to look at these bigger systems of equations uh, using technology to help us find the inverse and do the multiplication. Uh, so what do we have? So we got A, B, C, and D is going to be our coefficient matrix. That's going to be our capital A matrix, the same matrix that we saw just a second ago in number one and number two. That's our A matrix. This is capital A. Uh, and where did we get those numbers from? Uh, those numbers, this uh, first row is the first equation. The second row is the second equation. The first column is X, and the second column is Y, if we want to label those. You don't have to, but you can. What if we had three equations and three variables? Well, we just put the third equation on the third row. We put Z in the third column. Okay, X, Y, Z. Uh, we do have a matrix of variables in this case. Uh, it's going to be X. The matrix of variables is X. And since we're only using two variables today, uh, we might label that X, Y. Because that's the matrix we're trying to find. We're not trying. Earlier, we found two by two matrix. Now we're only going to find a two by one matrix. Um, earlier, we did find two by two. And what is this matrix of constants? The B value that we looked at earlier, that B matrix that we looked at earlier, is this matrix of constants idea. Um, and this is going to be our E and our F. What is our uh, what is our equations equal to? That's going to be our B matrix. And since that B matrix is only a two by one, that means the matrix we're trying to find is only a two by one, not a two by two. So our multiplication is going to be a little less tedious this time because we're not multiplying a two by two and a two by two together. It's going to be a two by two and a two by one. Uh, so how do we solve these? The same way we solved all of the others. We have our A variable or our A matrix our X matrix, and our B matrix. So negative 2, 3, and 5, and 1. Where did that come from? The first equation is the first row. The second equation is the second row. X coefficients are the first column. Y coefficients are the second column. That first matrix is everything to the left of the equal sign, the way we have our problem set up. Everything on the left of the equal sign. Our matrix of variables, this is just our capital X, or we can write it as X comma Y. Like, hey, what is X and what is Y? What are those two elements? And our matrix of constants is going to be what our equations are equal to, uh, and they're equal to negative 11 and 19. They're equal to negative 11 and 19. How do we solve this? Well, we got AX, A times X equals... B. Well, guess how we solve it? Uh, the same way we solved all of the other equations so far today. Uh, X equals A inverse times B. I mean, that's really it. It's the exact same thing. Once we set it up this way, uh, it, it is literally the same thing we've been doing all day. Uh, 1 over negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Minus 3 times 5 is 17. We're going to switch the negative 2 and the 1. They're going to change places. Same sign, but they change places. The 3 and the 5 are going to change signs. They say in the same place, but they change signs. Negative 2 minus, uh, I lied to you guys. Uh, this yeah. would be 15. Uh, negative 2 minus 15 is negative 17. Uh, I was, went ahead and added them together by mistake um, in my head and then wrote 17 instead of 15. It should be negative 2 minus 15, which is negative 17. And now uh, we're just going to rewrite these elements 1, negative 3, negative 5, and negative 2. 1, negative 3, negative 5, and negative 2. So now we know what our inverse matrix is uh, and just writing out all of the steps, uh, which are not necessarily uh, necessary. Um, we're going to write the inverse again, the 1 over negative 17, 1, negative 3, negative 5, and negative 2, uh, times the B matrix, which was our constant matrix, which is what our equation was equal to at the beginning, uh, and that was negative 11 and 19.
Now, the answer on your test could look like that, right? X, Y equals, pick that answer choice, right? You don't have to multiply. Uh, there's only going to be one or two problems on your test where you actually have to go through, like, beginning to end this entire process. There's only one or two on the entire test. Uh, but there could be a couple where, like, you stop here. Or maybe a problem where you only find the inverse idea. Um, maybe one uh, where you don't get to use Desmos, where we actually have to get all the way down here to what does X and Y equal. Uh, so we're almost there. We're not far off. Uh, we just got to do a little matrix multiplication here. Uh, we're going to multiply the 1 and the negative 11 together. That's negative 11. We're going to multiply the negative 3 and the 19 together. That's 57. Negative 57. We're going to multiply the negative 5 and the negative 11, which is positive 55. We're going to multiply the negative 2 and the 19 together, which is negative 38. Uh, so xy is equal to 1 over negative 17. We're going to save that to the very last step. Uh, it's going to make our life much, much easier, I promise. Uh, negative 11 and negative 57 is negative 68. 55 and negative 38 is 17. And now we can multiply everything by 1 over negative 17. Use a calculator if you need to. Um, 1 over negative 17 times negative 68 is positive 4. And 1 over negative 17 times 17 is negative 1. Uh, so now that I've done all of this work, uh, we have solved this system of equations using matrices. Um, this is really, really quick if we can use matrix technology like Desmos. I'm going to show you how to do that tomorrow. Uh, we're literally just going to type in A inverse times B tomorrow on the calculator. And it's going to give me 4, negative 1 uh, right out. We could write that answer as an ordered pair because it is an X and a Y value. Uh, or we could just simply write X equals 4 and Y equals negative 1. We need to know what X equals. We need to know what Y equals. Because maybe I ask you, hey, what is the X value in this particular system? X equals 4. You need to be able to tell me, hey, X equals 4. All right, last one. We're going to set it up. I don't know if we're going to actually multiply everything together, uh, but we are going to set it up. Uh, and we're going to talk about how to find the answer. And once we get to the multiplication part, I'm probably going to stop. Our coefficient matrix is going to be 2, negative 3, 1, and 4. 2, negative 3, 1, and 4. We're going to multiply that by our variable matrix, which is x, y, which you could also just write as like a big capital X if you wanted to. Um, and that's going to be equal to our constant matrix, which is 19 and negative 7. So how are we going to solve for x and y? Um, so on a test, what could the answers look like? Let's talk about maybe progression. Um, it's going to be uh, 2, negative 3, 1, 4, inverse. So we want the inverse of that times 19, negative 7. That's that A inverse B idea. There's your A inverse B. Can we find A inverse? Sure. Uh, A inverse is going to be 1 over something times, what do we need to do to our matrix to rearrange it? Um, I'm just going to write everything over again, the 19, the negative 7. Um, <clears throat> we need to find the determinant of matrix A. And then we need to rearrange matrix A to turn it into the inverse. Uh, so 2 times 4 is 8. Be really careful here when we subtract. It's 8 minus negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. So it's actually 8 minus negative 3, which is 11. And then the 2 and the 4 are going to switch places. We get the 4 and the 2. The negative 3 and the 1 are going to switch signs. Uh, 3 and negative 1. So what could the answers look like on your test? It could look like this. Like we didn't even find the inverse. We just knew that we needed to find the inverse. Maybe we do find the inverse, but we don't multiply it. Or maybe we multiply the whole thing together. Um, and you're only going to have to do that on your test one or two times, uh, where you actually have to multiply all of this together one or two times. Um, and if you really want, I can multiply that together 